So I watched Mother last week, and it's been quite a while since I'd seen that movie, and I completely forgot how balls to the walls this movie is. Like, certainly one of the most anxiety-inducing films I've ever seen. Like, I just can't really relax when I watch it. When this thing came out, it was extremely polarizing for audiences, and if you've seen it, I'm sure you understand why. But personally, I feel like this movie will be remembered for quite some time. So welcome to Classic Explained, Episode 2. Mother. This film is really dense with symbols, but I'm going to try to keep it to the three theme structure. One, selflessness of motherhood, where we'll discuss mother, the house, the poet, the poster art, mother's pain, and ears ringing, the yellow powder, and the house's heartbeat. Two, entitlement of mankind, where we'll discuss the man, the woman, the sons, and the many symbols of the house guests. And three, cycle of existence, where we'll discuss the intro, the blood stain on the floor, the title style with the exclamation mark, the baby, the gas tank, and every single thing to do with the ending, and much more. And if you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, selflessness of motherhood. Okay, I just want to start this theme off by describing the type of movie that this movie is. This film is an allegory, a story designed almost entirely out of symbols to teach us a greater lesson about real life. Not a single character in this movie gets a name because they each represent a greater idea about life, religion, philosophy, or history. The Jennifer Lawrence character is mother. She represents mother nature or mother earth. Javier Bardem's character is credited as him, but in this video, we'll call him the poet. He represents a common idea of God, and this whole story is an allegory about Mother Earth, God, and mankind. So as said before, Mother represents Mother Nature, a personification of Earth that focuses on the life-giving processes of Earth. Mother Nature nurtures her living things by designing every little detail of the natural world around them. And Mother, in this film, does the exact same thing. Throughout the entire film, Mother never leaves the front steps of the house, signifying her loyalty to the planet she must nurture and take care of. She passionately designs the house's walls, ceilings, floors, and furniture, which represents every detail of our natural world. In particular, she makes a final decision to paint her walls green, which match the lush green green color that covers most of the land in a pure, natural world. Mother is quite obviously the most selfless character in this film, which represents the traditional role of a mother. Mothers are the ones who bear the child, they are the ones who naturally feed the child, and they are the ones who historically have taken the most care of the child. As a mother, there's a tremendous amount of sacrifice for those the mother loves, and this is, in my opinion, the most important theme in this movie. It's the title of the movie. Even the cover art for the film shows a mother sacrificing her physical well-being to give away her heart, her love, to someone else. But of course, it's not only the house that Mother tirelessly dedicates her time and energy to. It's also the poet. Mother does everything she can to accommodate the poet and help him discover a new piece to write. And clearly, throughout this entire film, we can see that the poet cares more about the progress and reception of his work than the well-being of Mother. And I think the poet's obsession with his writing and his fans represents how we as people often prioritize the importance of religion and cultural values over the importance of respecting our planet. God is known for having brought humans into this world and is also known for forgiving us for our sins, which explains why the poet endlessly invites more and more guests into his house and is so forgiving of the harm these people cause. He loves them unconditionally. Mother has quite a different relationship with the house guests in this movie. She simply wants them to leave. Mother is aware of the potential harm that the guests could cause to the house and therefore feels they aren't needed. And sadly it's true, the natural world works beautifully without people in it. When the first man arrives, Mother hears a super high frequency ringing and feels the sudden intense pain. This happens when mother feels the house is being threatened or damaged on a new level, which is why it happens intermittently in the first half of the film but it happens constantly and more intensely in the second half of the film. And to remedy this feeling, Mother drinks a solution of this yellow powder. And personally, I thought about this one for quite a while, like I really couldn't figure out a super concrete answer for this. So I read an interview with the director, Darren Aronofsky, and he literally said, I will never answer what Jen is drinking. That secret I will take to the grave. So my best guess would be that this yellow solution is a very loose representation of sunlight. The reason why I say this is because the sun 
is the only external force that contributes to the health of the Earth. Without the sun, the Earth wouldn't survive. Everything else the Earth handles on its own, with its own resources and ecosystems, like Mother does in this movie. I also read an article in Bustle where they mentioned it was a nod to a short story called Yellow Wallpaper. The story is about postpartum depression and a woman gone mad thanks to her oppressive husband and a culture that doesn't take her seriously, which is a very similar premise to this film. Mother also has this supernatural connection with the house, where she can literally see how healthy the house is with an image of the house's beating heart. The more guests that arrive, the more damaged the house becomes, and the worse the house's heart's condition becomes. So let's talk about the influence of the house guests and everything they mean in this movie in theme number two, entitlement of mankind. Literally every person in this movie, besides Mother and the poet, symbolize mankind. And all these individuals represent either biblical figures, historical figures, religious groups, societal groups, political groups, or some kind of movement. There's quite a lot here with all these people, so let's start with the first person who walks in, the man. The man represents the biblical figure, Adam. Adam was the first person that God created, and God removed Adam's rib in order to create Eve. Therefore, the man is the first one to enter the house, and in the bathroom we see that there is a wound in his rib cage. The next person to enter the house is the woman, who obviously represents Eve. God gave Adam and Eve the beautiful Garden of Eden, rich with fruit and vegetables to eat, but said they weren't allowed to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This part of the story is symbolized by the overly generous hospitality that the poet is giving to the man and woman, as he also forbids them from touching the stone. There's also an aspect of the biblical story where the devil turned to a serpent and convinced Eve to doubt God's words. She eventually surrendered to the temptation and convinced Adam to eat the apple with her from the forbidden tree. This relates to how the woman in this movie is quite wrapped up in temptation. She enjoys sex and drinking the most, and eventually she convinces the man to join her in holding and accidentally breaking the poet's precious stone. Adam and Eve were eventually expelled from the Garden of Eden and would now be vulnerable to sickness and death. This explains why Adam felt so ill at the house and why the poet was so upset, removing the doorknob and boarding up the doors. This biblical story began the loss of innocence for mankind, which explains why every person in this movie besides the poet and mother are so extremely entitled. Next, we get the best example of entitlement with the two sons. The two sons represent Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel are the actual sons of Adam and Eve. And long story short, Cain becomes jealous of Abel since God prefers Abel because Abel offers a more respectful sacrifice. So out of greed and jealousy, Cain struck Abel in the head with the stone and killed him. In the film, it's very similar. One son is jealous of the other for what each of them are being offered in the man's will. So he strikes his brother in the head with a door handle and kills him. Of course, later on, we get more house guests. We start with smaller numbers, but over the course of the movie, the number of people grows and grows. This is obviously representing the rapid growth of the world's population and the limited resources there are on Earth. The house guests are abusing the home the same way people abuse the resources that we have on our planet. We treat the planet like it's ours, like we know its limits, and we know that the planet can withstand whatever temporary harm we bring to it. We value personal comfort over compassion for for nature and all of its life forms. We even get people trying to decorate the house, symbolizing how we've dramatically changed the way the world looks. We perceive it as better when it's completely different from the way Mother Nature planned. We even get a scene where the publisher says, it's hot in here, isn't me? We also get the development of these cult-like groups saying, his words are your words. This represents certain groups who have an unconditional devotion to God's words and the literal words of the Bible. There's also a lot of war, chaos, and destruction, which is very self-explanatory. And this chaos results from differing philosophies and differing religious and political beliefs. We also get to see the results of the war with death, destruction, homelessness, and hunger. We also get groups of house guests representing rebellion against tyranny. We see these revolutionaries with homemade weapons eventually being executed. And I thought it was clever how it was the publisher that was executing them. It's like she represents an oppressive ruler who has manipulated God's words in order to propel her political movement and execute whoever challenges it. Theme number three, cycle of existence. 
At the start of the film, we see the poet place the stone on the display. Right after this, we see the house fixing and rebuilding itself from broken wood, ashes, and dust. And in the next shot, we see mother waking up in bed. This is all symbolic of God's creation of Earth and Earth's designer, who is Mother Nature. It's once people start visiting and trying to handle the rules of mother that things become damaged and people in the house begin to experience their most ill feelings for one another. Particularly, after Cain kills Abel, we see what at first looks like a bloodstain, but it actually is a wound on the house. And it makes sense that at this moment the house would form this wound, since what just occurred was the first killing between two people. And this killing stemmed from the first extreme form of hatred, jealousy, and selfishness. The hatred, jealousy, and selfishness of man will be the death of the earth. And of course, we see that play out in this movie. It's even in the title. In an interview with the director, Darren Aronofsky, he says, the purpose of the style of the title is to reflect the spirit of the movie. And that makes sense to me because it starts with a lowercase m to reflect the peace and modesty of the intro, but it ends with an exclamation mark to reflect the incomprehensible chaos of the film's climax. The title's style also seems like a cry for the mother figure in nature and in society who often goes on overlooked and underappreciated. The house uses this wound to lead mother down to the basement where various supernatural things are occurring. Mother notices the furnace turning on when she goes downstairs and eventually a door forms and breaks to show mother a tank of gas. The house is basically telling mother that if things ever get so awful that you can't bear it, this is your escape. The more damaged the house becomes, the more tempting it is for mother to pull the trigger. Therefore, the wound makes itself more visible. Eventually, of course, mother and the poet notice they are expecting a baby, which I'm sure you know represents Jesus. The baby inspires the poet to write once again, and after people begin reading the poet's new work, they are mesmerized and crowds of people start visiting. This, of course, represents the many stories in the Bible that included Jesus and how influential he was on the Christian people. But in this movie, once the baby is born, mother and the poet are at odds with one another. Mother wants to keep the baby safe, away from the chaos throughout the house. The poet wants to show the baby to the house guests since they are literally worshipping both him and the baby. This conflict obviously represents Mother Nature's need to preserve, protect, and sustain her creations versus God's need to offer a savior for all of humanity's sins. The poet, of course, representing God, never gets tired and eventually steals the baby from Mother when she falls asleep and hands the baby to the people. The people celebrate Jesus' birth quite dangerously, which is really hard to watch. Next, it just gets worse by hearing little bones break, and eventually we see the cult-like group of people eating something raw and bloody, which is, yes, the baby. It's pretty much an extreme and graphic hyperbole of the practice in church eating and drinking the body and blood of Christ. Next, mother is being brutally abused by the house guests. This represents a point in humanity where we entirely put our personal beliefs, rewards, and values over the sustainability of the planet. It's the point of no return. So as a result, mother recognizes that this is what the house was always hinting towards. This is the point of pain, disrespect, and unconditional sacrifice that she can no longer take. Mother runs to the basement, lets the gas pour out and destroys the house with the man's lighter. The poet, of course, being God, is the only one unscathed by the flames. The poet carries mother, who is on the brink of death. They are the last two people in the house. We get the line from mother, I have nothing left to give. The poet responds, nothing is ever enough. That's how I create. And still, after everything mother has sacrificed, she gives the poet her heart. Mother's heart is the stone, which restarts the story. The mother offering her heart symbolizes her selflessness and her unconditional sacrifice to sustain and nurture the life she has created. We even see, at the very beginning of the film, before the title card, another mother that burned the house down before Jennifer Lawrence's mother did the same thing. So once again, the cycle continues as the walls, floors, and ceilings rebuild themselves, and one more infinitely selfless mother is born. Wow, that was long, but really fun. Thank you for watching. Taxi Driver is next, which I'm really excited for. But please, let me know in the comments if you know any other symbols of mother, because there are like a million here that I know my video won't cover. I hope you subscribe so I can see you again. And thank you so much for watching. See you later.